Hello guys and welcome. In this video we're gonna instantiate entities in our project and we're gonna sync them across the network. So in order to instantiate a prefab you need to create the prefab first. So here in the subscene I'm gonna create an empty game object and I'm gonna name it unit or you can name it player or anything you want. So to visualize this I am going to create a capsule. So let's take a look and we can bring it up here. So let's say this is the representation of a unit we have. Let's say we have a strategy game or anything like that. So to make it a prefab, let's go ahead and create a folder and name it prefabs. So we can drag this unit here. So that's gonna be our prefab. In order to instantiate this prefab using netcode for entities, we need to attach a component called ghost authoring component. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we can go ahead and apply the changes to our prefab. Now we can go ahead and delete this. And if we select the prefab, you see that we have a bunch of options that I'm not gonna cover in this video, but most of them explain themselves. So let's put this on predicted and check has owner. So to instantiate a prefab, we need to access the prefab first. In order to do that, let's go ahead and create a script and I'm gonna call it prefabs. So if we open this, we can create a game object and call it prefab, which you can add as many prefabs you want. For example, if you have different types of units or different types of player. And here I am going to also create a I component data called prefabs data and it has a representation of that game object but as entity and then we can use a baker let's call it prefabs baker and when we are overriding the bake first we're going to make sure the authoring prefab is not null in that case we're going to get the entity and then we're going to attach the prefab data component to it and then we are going to assign the prefab value by getting the entity of that game object and that's how we are going to access this entity which is going to be our prefabs using get singleton of the prefabs data because we're going to only have one prefabs data in our scene so let's go back to the editor and here I can create a empty game object and let's call it prefabs and we can attach the prefabs and also we can attach the unit to our prefab variable. So let's say whenever the client presses a key on the keyboard, we want to instantiate a unit for that player in the game world. So let's go to the scripts and here in the client system, whenever the client presses let's say W key, we want to send an RPC to the server. So in order to do that, we need a RPC command, which I'm gonna name it spawn unit RPC command. I leave it empty, but you can assign different variables if you want to determine which type of unit it is or any properties you want. And we can go ahead and create a function for it right here. I'm gonna call it spawn unit RPC. It is going to get a world and it is going to create an entity using send RPC command request and spawn unit RPC command. Just like the previous RPC commands that we were sending in the other videos. So if we go back to the unupdate, we can say here if input key down W key, then we're going to call spawn unit RPC and we're going to pass connection manager client world. So let's go to the server and receive that RPC and the server system on update. Let's say here we can do a for each and grab any receive RPC command request with spawn unit RPC command attached to it. And after we grabbed those entities, we're going to try to get a reference for our prefabs by saying system api try get singleton of prefabs data we're gonna put the results in this prefabs variable and if our prefabs dot prefab is not null then we're going to instantiate that prefab using the command buffer dot instantiate and at the end we can destroy that entity which is the request entity and here we can add or change the component data of this unit. For example, we can choose a random position for our entity. In order to do something like that, 
we can use the command buffer set component. We're gonna use the entity and create a new local transform. For the position, I'm gonna create a new random position. I'm not gonna touch the rotation and of course the scale is going to be one. We also have the option to set the owner of this entity. We can do that if we want. If we don't do this, server is going to be considered the owner of the entity but if you want to choose the client as the owner if you remember in the previous video we created a component lookup for the network id of our clients we can use that to get the network id of the client who sent this request using the source connection so it's gonna return the network id of that client and we can use the set component to change the ghost owner this is a property we want to change so the network id equals to network id dot value now the client who sent this request is the owner of this entity so we're not done yet but let's go ahead and try to test our project so if i play this and if i hit the w key you see that nothing happens, but if we go to the entities hierarchy, you see that in the server world, it's actually creating the units for us. It is on the client world that nothing is happening. So it's because there is a component called network stream in game. So we need to add that to our connection in order for data being synchronized over the network. So in order to do that, Let's go ahead and create two systems. One of them is going to be go in game client system. And the other one is going to be go in game server system. So if we open the go in game client system, we can change it to partial struct and use I system. So let's also add the filters to make sure it only runs on the client or thin client. And then we need a RPC command let's call it go in game command and inside the on create function we are going to create a builder and we're gonna say run the update only if there is a entity in the world with network id and without network stream in game and we can go ahead and create the on update and we can create a command buffer play back the command buffer and dispose it when we're done and in between we can create a query searching for entities with network id and without network stream in game we also get the entity access and here we're gonna use the add component to attach a network stream in game to our entity and after that we're gonna create a new entity as a request by adding the go in game command and send rpc command so it's gonna send the rpc command to the server so let's go ahead and receive this rpc on our server inside the go in game server system so we're gonna change this to partial struct it's also going to be i system and let's make sure it only runs on the server simulation and inside on create we're gonna create a builder to make sure the update runs only when there is a entity in the scene with receive rpc command and go in game command which client is going to send so when we have that we're gonna update and let's go ahead and create the update function and also create the command buffer and dispose here and let's create the query by grabbing any entity with receive rpc command request and go in game command with entity access first we're gonna add the component network stream in game on the source connection of that client so we have added it on our client system to the connection here network stream in game so we're gonna do it for the server as well we're gonna attach it to our source connection which is the entity for the connection between this client and the server and we're gonna destroy the entity which brought us this request because we don't need it anymore so now data is going to be streamed between our clients and the server now if we go to the editor 
and play the project, you see that if I hit the W key each time, a new unit is going to be instantiated in our scene. And if we take a look at the entity's hierarchy, you see that there is the unit in the server world and that is the unit in the client world. So let's go ahead and grab a build for our project as well. Here we go. I'm going to place it in the build folder on my desktop. So if we play the editor and if we also play the build version, if we select this version of the game and hit W, you can see that units are being instantiated on both server and client. There's also another thing that I like to mention here that if I close the client, this client is going to be disconnected, but the entities are going to remain on the server. That is actually something you can change and it's up to you whether you want to do it or not based on what type of game you want to create. So if I close this right here, you can see the entities are still here, but you can change that if you want. So in order to do that, we can go back to our server system where we are creating the unit entity. So here we can use command buffer dot append to buffer, and we're going to pass the entity of the source connection, then we're going to create a new linked entity group. And for the value, we're going to pass this entity that we have instantiated. So basically, it's going to say, whenever this connection was destroyed, destroy this unit as well. And basically link the connection and this unit together. So if we go ahead now and get another build, we should see different results when we close the client. Let's play the editor first. And now if I play the instance and if I start instantiating units, you see that if I close the client now, all the entities associated with this client are going to be destroyed. So if I select the editor now and hit W to instantiate some units, now if I go and start another instance of the client, you see that when the instance starts, it is going to be immediately synced with the server and all those units are going to be instantiated as well. So if I instantiate more units and if I close this client, only those units for that client was destroyed. And also the transform of this unit should be synchronized. So if I start another instance of the project and let's go ahead and open the entities hierarchy. And if I just move one of them from our server world, when I select this here in the inspector, if I move this, you can see when I move it in the editor, it's also going to be moved in the instance of the client. Everything is now synchronized across the network. So I'm going to finish the video right here and feel free to ask me any questions that you have. Also make sure to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.